Yeah. All right. Happy Friday, Rumbleverse. I hope everyone had a great week. Uh, welcome to Talk Nerdy to Me. Thank you for joining me once again. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode and you stay up to date on the latest security news. You can also join me on Locals for exclusive content. As always, I'll share the links to these articles in the video description for anyone that's interested. All right, um, let's get into it. As always, a lot to cover, so let's get going. Uh, hackers using trendy TikTok in invisible challenge to spread malware. Threat actors are capitalizing on a popular TikTok challenge to trick users into downloading information stealing malware. The trend is called Invisible Challenge and it involves applying a filter known as Invisible Body that just leaves behind a silhouette of the person's body. This has led to a nefarious scheme wherein the attackers post TikTok videos with the links to rogue software dubbed Unfiltered that claim to remove the applied filter. Instructions to get the unfiltered software deploys the WASP stealer malware hiding inside malicious Python packages. This malware is designed to steal users' passwords, Discord accounts, cryptocurrency wallets, and other sensitive information. The TikTok videos posted by the attackers on November 11th of 2022 are estimated to have reached over a million views. The accounts have been suspended by TikTok. Also included in the video are, is an invited link to a Discord server manager by the adversary, which had nearly 32,000 members before it was reported and deleted. Victims joining the Discord server subsequently received a link to a GitHub repository that hosts the malware. The attacker has since renamed the projects to Nitro Generator, but not before it landed on GitHub's trending repositories list of no for November 27th by urging the new members on Discord to start the project. Besides changing the rest the repository name, the threat actor deleted old files in the project and uploaded fresh ones, one of which even described the updated Python code as it's open source. It's not a virus. The GitHub account has now been pulled. The level of manipulation used by software supply chain attackers is increasing as attackers become increasingly clever. These attacks demonstrated against, uh, again, that cyber attackers have started to focus their attention on the open source package ecosystem. This malicious app abused hacked devices to create fake accounts on multiple platforms. A malicious Android SMS application discovered on the Google Play Store has been found to stealthily harvest text messages with the goal of creating accounts on a wide range of platforms like Facebook, Google, and WhatsApp. The app named Simu, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, S-Y-M-O-O, -O, had over 100,000 downloads and functioned as a relay for transmitting messages to a server which advertises an account creation service. This is achieved by using the phone numbers associated with the infected devices as a means to gather the one-time password that's typically sent to verify the user when, this, when setting up new accounts. The malware asks the phone number of the user in the first screen while also requesting for SMS permission. Then it pretends to load the application but remains on the page. It does this to hide the interface of the received SMS and so the user does not see the SMS of subscriptions to the various services. Some of the major services illegally signed up using this, the phone numbers include Amazon, Discord, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Microsoft, Nike, Telegram, TikTok, Tinder, Viber, and WhatsApp, among others. Additionally, the data collected by the malware is exfiltrated to a domain name, which was previously used in another malicious application called Virtual Number that has since been taken down by the Play Store. The app's developer, Walven, has also been linked to another Android app known as Activation PW Virtual Numbers that claims to offer virtual numbers to receive SMS verification from more than 200 countries for less than 50 cents. Google has removed the apps from the Play Store and the developer has been banned. Australia passes bill to fine companies up to 50 million uh, Australian dollars for data breaches. The Australian government has passed a bill that markedly increases the penalty for companies suffering from serious or reported data breaches. The maximum fines have been bumped up from the current 2.2 million to 50 million, 30% 30 of an entity's adjusted turnover in the relevant period or three times the value of any benefit obtained through the misuse of information, whichever is greater. So the turnover period is the time duration from when the con contravention occurred 
to the end of the month when the incident is officially addressed. According to the Attorney General Mark Dreyfus, significant privacy breaches in recent months have shown existing safeguards are outdated and inadequate. These reforms make clear to companies that the penalty for major data breach can no longer be regarded as the cost of doing business. The legislation called the Privacy Legislation Amendment Bill 2022 also bestows more powers to the Australian Information Commissioner to address security breaches. The new information sharing powers will facilitate engagement with domestic regulations, our regulators, and our international counterparts to help us perform our regulatory role efficiently and effectively, Australian Information Commissioner and Privacy Commissioner Angeline Falk said. The bill, which has been tabled as part of wider reforms to the Privacy Act 1988, now awaits royal assessment to be formally signed into law. The development comes in the wake of recent major breaches at Optus and Medibank, which we covered a few weeks ago, that have resulted in the leak of personal information associated with 2.1 million and 9.7 million customers, respectively. Attacks on large companies dominate the news, which feeds the perception that SMBs are safe when the opposite is true. Attacks are increasingly automated, so SMBs are even more vulnerable targets than large enterprises because they usually don't have adequate security processes in place. And hackers will always follow the path of least resistance. The goal of this show is to get businesses to start approaching cyber as a business risk. Ask yourself what type of impact would be catastrophic to your operations. What information, if compromised or breached, would cause damage to employees, customers, or business partners? What is your level of risk, appetite, and risk tolerance? Raising the level of awareness helps reinforce the uh, culture of making informed decisions and understanding the level of risk to the organization. Rumbleverse, thank you again for joining me today. That's it for this week. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. See you next time.